Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Tees and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reacting to Steins Gate Zero Episode 4. So at the moment we have kind of like these two things going on. We have Suzuha's mission. She wants Okarin to time travel and change the future in which everyone's gonna die, including the people she really loves. And at the same time we have the whole Amadeus program uh, which Okarin is trying out right now. So he's having these daily conversations with Makise Kurisu, but she's just an AI. It's not a real thing, but she acts and talks like Kurisu as he knew. So he's really like in between these two things and he's really conflicted about it. He's still not over the fact that Kurisu is dead. So that's why it's kind of dangerous that he's feeling more and more attachment towards that Amadeus. But then he got that wake up call, all these flashbacks came back and he kind of lost it. And that's where we left off in the previous episode. And I'm really curious to see how that's going to continue in this episode. I still don't really see the connection between the two things I just mentioned. But I'm sure at some point in this story is definitely gonna be related. So yeah, I'm really excited and cannot wait to watch this episode. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. So let's go. All right, I'm ready. So I'm gonna start the episode in three, two, one, go. What is this? Oh shit. Is this maybe the future that Suza is trying to prevent? I think so. Even though it was a nightmare, but I feel like that is what is gonna happen in the future that Suza came from. Wait. Was it a dream? No, that was definitely not just a dream. Oh, okay. But that was interesting. <sighs> yeah, also based on what we saw um, in that nightmare, his um, phone is definitely going to play a big role in this whole thing.
Oh, now we're back to this moment. Okay, so things still seem normal. But he still experienced that reading Steiner, which is strange. Oh. <laughs> oh, it was like Secret Santa, so they just exchange presents and you don't know who you'll give it to. Strange. Wintaro. <laughs> oh, so cute. Yeah, I... Mm. Yeah, if you think about it, it should be possible because feelings often come from our own experiences. So if she definitely has like memories that are stored, of course she can develop feelings from it as well, if you think about it logically. Yeah, like, technically in this timeline, that's all that happened between them, but we know there was a lot more between them in all these different timelines.
Aww, so cute. Some fa father daughter talk. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, because of their relationship, Daru just seems more and more mature in my eyes. Or, like, he just seems more, like, older, I guess. Even though he hasn't. Like, he hasn't gotten older or anything, but just, like, his image. <laughs> He's also acting like a father. Oh, that's probably the girl from that flashback we saw like one or two episodes ago. Um, excuse me? There's closed up. So this is what will happen. She looks so much like Kurisu. But it would be so weird if she was Kurisu. Oh my god, this is getting so complicated. There's so many timelines and times going on. I don't think I'm, I can keep up, but I'm trying, I'm trying. I wonder if Okarin has the same idea.
Yeah, it would, yeah, it would be strange if you... Yeah, it, it's probably just really hurting him when I like looking at her smile. What? So that was kind of like a flashback, right? I think so. She's also connected to the net, right? Who is this guest? I feel like that person might be an important person in the story.
Girl and Braids. Oké. Okay. Huh? <laughs> See again, like he's acting so much like a dad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and now he's back to the old Dara. It's a bit too late for that, I think, though. Like, Ocarina already asked a lot of people about it. Is that the guest or her father? Oh, there she is. I, w I was wondering what kind of role she would play in this story. Okay. <laughs> wow. Just with this episode alone, the story has gotten so much more complicated. <laughs> And I'm sure that I don't, like, I didn't get everything. Um, it went by a bit too fast for me for that, so I'm sorry if I'm missing a lot of stuff. <laughs> Whew. But it's kind of like what I mentioned before watching this episode, you know, how there are these two things and I was wondering um, how they would get interconnected. And then I feel like in this episode, things are getting, like starting to get connected again. So that was Steins Gate Zero episode 4, like I just said, the story has gotten so much more complicated in just one episode. I'm not sure if I got everything, but I'm trying to like process all the information I'm getting and trying to connect as much dots as we can. I know there's still a lot of information lacking, we still have to meet a few characters I feel like. For instance, that visitor Rukako has been mentioning. Because I've seen Steins Gate, I know that they wouldn't just introduce a new character if it didn't play a big role in this story. So I'm sure that visitor she's mentioning it also has to do with the phone call she made at the end. I'm sure of it. So the first thing that made this 
um, story more complicated is that Okarin experienced the reading Steiner, which is uh, which is interesting because in this timeline there isn't supposed to be any time traveling happening because Okarin didn't develop it yet at this point. But it still happened, so it might be that someone else did it and Okarin still felt the reading Steiner as an effect. That is one possibility. And it also kind of has to do with his own phone, I feel like. Otherwise, Kurisu wouldn't mention that phone call he supposedly made, of which he didn't have any memories. Maybe that phone call he made might have been a trigger to that reading Steiner. That's still all unclear and a mystery. I also feel like the professor has something to do with it. We had that one moment where Okarin was going after the professor, but then the professor kind of disappeared. So that's something we have to keep in mind. The professor definitely ha uh, is hiding something. It might be also related to uh, why Okarin experienced the reading Steiner. Yeah, and the story is now inv also really involving the, the future about the war. We also saw that nightmare in the beginning of this episode. Whether it's actually a nightmare is still debatable. It might be like flashes from the future that he might may have seen or not seen. It's still, you know, it's, it's really confusing, especially when you, we're talking about time and different timelines. And the biggest plot twist, you could call it, is the girl that got introduced. And we already saw her in that flashback once, but now they properly introduced her in this episode, is the girl um, that Mayushi supposedly adopted in the future. It's a war orphan, and I forgot her first name, but yeah, she, she yeah, she's that girl with the red hair. Surprise, surprise! She really resembles Maxi Kurisu, so there's no doubt that they're kind of related. It might even be Kurisu. I feel like it is Kurisu that is the lost child, right? It may have been that Kurisu was that lost child, but maybe at some point she lost her memories of the time traveling and everything because it's just. Her looks are the same, even though she was younger then, but the clothes that uh, Suzu has showed were really similar to the clothes um, Kurisu used to wear. So I feel like the last child they're looking for is actually Kurisu, but I feel like that is just too obvious and they make us think that way. Because it's interesting that she has a different first name. So there's still like question marks regarding that. But yeah, now they're still looking for her. And for some reason, Moika got involved in that search as well. <laughs> and of course, this is a different timeline. So Moika might not be part of that organization anymore. But still, Okarin is still very suspicious of her. And it is still the first time she's introduced into the story and... Um, as a character having a role. There's just so much information to process. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments. I feel like I definitely need you guys help in order to get through this whole story. Yeah, this is definitely like brain cracking. So it would really help me if you guys can help clarify a few things without spoiling anything, of course. But this story definitely got a lot more complicated, a lot more interesting. So I cannot wait to watch the next one. But this was my reaction. I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you cannot wait to see my reaction to the next episode, please check out my Patreon. Or you can just check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. So thank you all for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.